in this country anyway, buildings consume 40% of the energy. And uh, again, I see that as a pretty significant number as opposed to five or 10%. Anything that we can do as professionals to cut that will, will help us down the road towards uh, energy independence. We all have a responsibility for ourselves, for our children, our next generation, and that responsibility requires us to behave with a conservative mindset. Everything that we need to keep us going puts a burden on the earth, and if we can tread more lightly by being more conservative in how we behave materially, then that lessens the damage to our environment and preserves more for the next generation. The structure can breathe, it can operate for as long as the bird maintains it, but like everything, one day it's not going to be a nest anymore. So what is it? And that's a question that we in the construction industry do not ask ourselves nearly enough. In the case of the weaver bird, it turns back into dirt. It, it becomes um, soil that is a nutrient for the next tree or cactus or whatever it may be. And that's what Mother Nature is so good at. It's closing that loop, right? From sourcing to manufacture, to use, to reuse, as however many times it can, back into a nutrient. So I think that's terrific. If we could build buildings that when they're done being whatever it is that they are, then they can be something else. Which is the more sustainable material? That cotton insulation that I showed you outside or extruded polystyrene, which is a plastic, it's a petrochemical and uh, it will never rot and never degrade. And when it burns, it's toxic. Cotton is, is, yes, there's a fiber, cotton fiber, but in between those cotton fibers, there's a lot of air. Uh, as I said before, if air is trapped in something and not moving, if you, if you don't have flowing air, air is a very good insulator. So it, it has, air by itself has high thermal resistivity. It resists the flow of thermal energy better than uh, something like metal, which would have very low thermal resistivity, high thermal conductivity. and the bird actually climbs up into the entryway and then has a little nesting area that's separate from the entryway and, and sheltered. Uh, certainly that entryway has an effect on, on the way you keep or lose your thermal energy in a nest. Well, the sphere is, is the most um, efficient shape in terms of um, energy use. Use of a sphere would minimize surface area and the less surface area means the less heat transfer, the less energy usage. So this, the weaver bird, at least in terms of keeping itself warm, is using that trick of, of having the entryway beneath the habitation space. Kind of like putting a foyer in a building that separates the habitation space from the entryway space where you can lose thermal energy by air, mass transfer, air transfer, into the building or out of the building. Yes, technology can reduce energy consumption or material consumption, but one critical thing is the individual behavior of every person. You don't have to become a builder or an architect or uh, a filmmaker. Whatever it is you do, you can make a difference and you can say, no, this is going to be my world. I want to have a world worth inheriting, so I'm going to demand clean energy. I'm going to ride my bicycle. <laughs> I'm going to eat fruits and vegetables, you know. <laughs> I'm going to take good care of, of what's around me and avoid plastics, recycle, you know, just the basic stuff's all the way up. Because it's, yeah, I mean, it's your planet. It's going to be yours eventually and you've got to take good care of it.